Hey masters, today we're going to talk about abstraction, polymorphism, and encapsulation in object-oriented programming. We're going to be using Python, so let's try it out. Let's define what is abstraction. Abstraction is the process of hiding the complex details and showing only essential features of an object. Abstraction is achieved by creating abstract classes and interfaces that define the common behavior and properties of a group of objects. These abstract classes and interfaces can be implemented by concrete classes that provide a specific implementation of the behavior and property. All right, now let's talk about implementing abstraction in Python. Python doesn't have a built-in support for abstract classes in the way some other languages do, but it offers the ABC module, which stands for Abstract Based Classes. All right, these modules provide the infrastructure for defining cost custom abstract classes in Python. All right, masters, let's try to understand the code example that I have for you uh, in order to understand what is abstraction, all right? So first of all, we are importing a couple of things, the ABC helper class and the abstract method decorator. You're gonna see what it is in a few seconds. First of all, here we have a class named vehicle. As you can see, it is using ABC as kind of parameter to let Python know that this is an abstract class, all right? That's basically what is going on. And as you can see, masters, under the vehicle class, we here we have an abstract method decorator, which is the one that I'm importing over here, okay? This method or behavior is move, okay? Um, however, you can see that it is not defined over here. I'm just letting know that the vehicle abstract class needs the move behavior, and it has to be implemented in the subclasses. So masters, as you can see below, I have a couple of classes of two different vehicles, the car vehicle and the boat vehicle. The first class car, the or as you, can, as you can see actually, they both have the same method, move and move. However, the definition is different for each of it. The move car a method is gonna say car is moving and the vehicle one is gonna say boat is moving, okay? So let me read you some notes that I have for you here, masters. In the example, vehicle serves as an abstract class with a simple interf, the move method, okay? The car and boat are concrete implementation of the vehicle abstract classes. Class, I'm sorry, all right? And then the clients interacting with the car and the boat instances don't need to know how move works internally. They only need to know what the met th that the method exists. That's why we're using abstract classes over here, okay? They don't need to be concerned with how the move method is implemented internally in each subclass. The abstraction allows clients to use car and boats and boat instances relying on the common interface provided by the vehicle class without needing to understand the specific detail of each vehicle's movement mechanism. This separation of concerns promotes encapsulation, modularity, and code reusability. That's what, basically why we're doing this procedure of having abstract classes, and the and that's this is how we are implementing abstraction in a very simple example. Of, okay, so masters, as you can see, of course, it is gonna work perfectly fine. If I come here, I run Python, then I look for introduction pillars, and then abstraction. You're gonna see that I have a couple of print messages here, which are car is moving because I am instantiating a new instance of the car a class, right? Now we have a car object here, and I am just calling the move um, behavior or method, and you can see that it is letting us know that the car is moving, and the same for the boat. I'm instantiating a new boat here, I'm calling the move, the move method, and as you can see, we are kind of implementing the abstract class correctly in each subclass, and we're specifying the definition of the method inside. All right, so this is like the first concept, and let's move to polymorphism. Let's start with polymorphism. Let me give you my insight. It's a kind of an abstract concept and you may explain this in different ways. However, I really like this one. And well, if you have some other example of other understanding of this, please let me know that in the comment section below. But this is gonna be my best at uh, explaining this particular concept. What is polymorphism is the ability of a program to detect the real class of an object and call its implementation even when its real type is unknown in the current context. I know, kind of tricky. Let's see the code. 
Alright, Masters, let's try to see the polymorphism in, in action. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna start Masters doing, we're creating a class named Shape. As I explained to you before, I'm, I'll be using ABC to let Python know that this is an abstract class. All right, and I'll be using the abstract decorator here to let Python know that the area behavior is going to be, well, an abstract method, basically. That's basically what is going on here. And as you can see, the implementation, it's unknown because every single shape that we're going to have in the real world has like different implementation of in implementations of the area calculation. All right, so that's it. I'm going to close the shape class. <laughs> All right, masters. So then I'll be opening the circle class. And as you can see, masters, the init dunder method is going to receive the radius. Okay, that's basically what I need. Now that I have the radius, I'm able to calculate the area. And this is the calculation based on the radius. I'm just doing the calculations over here. All right, as you can see, that's how the the area of a circle is uh, calculated. Everything looks fine. But then masters, here we have another example of a different shape. For instance, the square. Now, instead of having radius, now I have side. And the way of how we calculate the area of a square, it's different. And it's based on its side. Okay, that's basically what is going on. Then masters, here we have a triangle, a different shape. <laughs> okay, and, and as you can see, the area calculation, it's different based on two different parameters, the base and the height. So masters, as you can see, I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> using the abstract class over here and basically um, creating different kind of shapes with its different kind of implementations and variables and calculations with a very particular shape abstract class. Okay, so masters, now I want to explain you how you can see the polymorphism in action. Let's see. Let's see the polymorphism in action, masters. First of all, I create the variable shapes. These shapes variable is going to have a list of shapes. <laughs> okay, the first one is going to be a circle with the radius 4. Then we have a square with the side number 5. And then a triangle with the base 6 and the height 7. That's what is going on here. Then masters, I'll be using a for loop to iterate over the shapes variable and print some information that, that I want to know, right? So first of all, I want to print the shape object itself. As you can see, masters, I created the Dunder method str to let, uh, to basically have the ability of print the object information that I want to see. Okay. So if it is a triangle, we're going to have the triangle information with the base and the height, then the same, the same stuff for the uh, square with the side, and then the same information for the circle. All right. So first of all, I'll be uh, printing the object information, and then I'll be calculating the area of each object. But as you can see, masters, over here in this for loop, I am just using shape as variable, okay? Mm, how I can explain this? The actual method implementation is determined by the class of the object at runtime. We're not saying that the shape has a particular area method. It is kind of behind the scenes, all right? This is an example of polymorphism because we're just calling the shape and we're doing this magic behind the scenes. I'm not sure if I if you get the idea, but I think it's awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's let's run this. I'll be running polymorphism and as you can see, I'm running circle at first. Here is the area for the circle. Then we have the square with a side 5. Here is the calculation and then triangle and this is the calculation as well. So masters, um, just to recap, um, polymorphism is the ability of a program to detect the real class of an object and call its implementation even when its real type is unknown in the current context. In this particular context, the shape is unknown. It's depending on the list item that we're having in the for loop. I know it's kind of tricky, but I hope that you get the idea. Also, please let me know in the comment section if you have other examples of other understanding of polymorphism in Python, because I'm open to learn. So thank you very much, master. Now let's continue with the capsule encapsulation. All right, let's do it. What is encapsulation? It is the concept of bundling data slash attributes and code slash methods that operates on the data 
into a single unit. It is a fundamental principle in object-oriented programming that helps in organizing and protecting data from external interference. All right, masters, encapsulation is achieved by using access modifiers, which control how the attributes and methods of an object can be accessed and modified. The main idea is to hide the internal details of an object and expose only the necessary interfaces for interacting with it. Masters, if you have worked with other languages such as Java or C Sharp, you can remember that when you create a class, you can create public or private attributes, right? However, in Python, we have a workaround. Let me show you this. Here we have a class named person, and this person has the init donder method with an attribute name. So when we create a person, we're gonna be required to send the name attribute in the instantiation, right? As you can see, as the attribute name has a double underscore at the beginning of the attribute, and that this is the way of how um, we can kind of achieve the privacy in Python. However, I know if you are a Python master, <laughs> because I have research about this and it's a, it was a very good research because there are a lot of opinions, but no Python attribute is truly really private. There are ways to access this data if you want. However, if you wanna try to follow the rules of object-oriented programming, maybe you want to handle your private variables in this way. This is the only way that we have, if I'm not wrong, all right? so. Let's continue with another interesting concept that we also know in other languages, which is setter and getters. Let me show you this. All right, master. In other languages, as I told you before, we have private, public variables, and also we used to have setters and getters. Those methods are dedicated to accessing and changing attributes. That's basically what they do. In Python, not all the programmers call them getters and setters because they don't exist per se, <laughs> all right? However, we have kind of a Pythonic way to access and modify attributes if we want to use them. So let me show you this. Here we have a way to kind of get a private property using the property depth creator. We just have to create a function with the name in this particular case, the name is gonna be name. And as you can see, I'm just returning the private name attribute. This is going to be a getter. And then we can use another decorator here, name that setter. And this is the way of how we can change the private attribute using this function. As you can see, it is going to receive the name property. And then I'm just going to overwrite the existing name that we have when we instantiate it. So as you can see, this is a kind of a getter and this is kind of a setter, right? So setter and getter, I know if you don't want to call them this way in Python, it's fine. But if you are like me and you come from other languages such as Java or C Sharp, this is of the way of how we can achieve those interactions or functions or methods with Python in a, in a Pythonic way. Okay, master. So for instance, first of all, when I create a person, you can see that I'm sending the name John. Okay, this is the A. And when I print the name person, the name, it is gonna return John, okay? Because I am using the getter name over here, <laughs> okay? And then I can overwrite the name property by the setter, okay? And I'm just changing the name to John, from John to Jane, and then I'll be using the getter again to to get the, the person information, all right? So as you can see, if I run this, I'll show you the running encapsulation, and as you can see, I'm able to get the information and set a new one, even if it is a private attribute. You may be wondering if and if I try to access directly the person attribute with the underscore, it is gonna work and it is not. I'll show you the instance, the name, okay? You can see that here I have um, an error saying that the person object has no attribute name. Did you mean name, okay? So yeah, that's why we may want to set a getter and a setter. Um, and as I'm telling you, obviously there are ways to access this particular name attribute, but it is not as explicit as I know. okay? So masters, this is the explanation for abstraction, polymorphism, and encapsulation. Please subscribe to Join Media. In the last video, we saw a what is inheritance. We we I also show you what is an object, what is a class. So those are those videos that you can see over here are about that. Please subscribe. Let me know your feedback in the comment section. 
uh, the code it's in my repository python poo patterns i'm gonna try to leave the repo in the description and you can also find me on jarmedia.dev and under blocks on the, under the block part you're gonna be able to find the object oriented programming block and here you have a uh, all the videos indexed in my personal page okay master so i hope that you enjoy it see you in the next one bye bye